Hello everyone, my name is Ernest and uh, today I'm going to present from radiomics to genomics multi-class uh, radiomics based models for pediatric low-grade neuroepithelial tumors molecular subtype identification based on open radiomics protocol. This research is based on our recently accepted uh, paper which is going to be presented at RSNA 2023. What is uh, PLGNT? Uh, PLGNTs uh, comprise a heterogeneous variety of tumors classified by the World Health Organization as grades one or two. P uh, PLGNTs are the most common brain tumors in children, accounting for approximately 40% of tumors of the CNS in childhood. And uh, if total resection is not possible, PLGNT becomes a chronic disease with a protracted uh, reduction in quality of life with a 10-year uh, progression-free survival rate of less than 50%. The motivation uh, for this research is that if we are able to uh, detect uh, PLGNTs at their early stages and conditioned on achieving uh, precise tumor subtype classification, then successful uh, prognosis, uh, prognosis and uh, treatment planning um, can be achieved. The most common types of uh, PLGNTs are fusions and mutations in uh, BRAF genes, which is uh, what we will be focused on for this research. Currently, uh, the ground truth is biopsy. However, it comes with uh, drawbacks. Um, biopsy is invasive. It might seed the tumor might not be feasible depending on the uh, tumor location, which is the most important uh, reason for switching to imaging-based um, subtype identification. And its accuracy depends on precise sampling location. Therefore, imaging-based tumor type detection is required. The data that we curated uh, includes 339 internal um, PLGG patients, which is one of a kind um, in, in uh, this topic. The segmentation uh, was done manually on flare sequence. The uh, whole tumor masks uh, were created during the segmentation process. Associated genetic markers were assessed through biopsy and the classes are imbalanced, but the imbalanceness is not drastic. Um, so we have uh, 143 cases for BRAF fusion. We have uh, 71 cases for BRAF mutation, and the rest of the data is from other subtypes. Now, to be able to conduct uh, AI-based analysis, the data set needs to be AI ready for that heavy pre-processing is required. We had um, four different sequences for each patient, a flare T1, T1 contrast enhancers and T2. All images were registered to the SRI24 Atlas. So uh, at, after pre-processing, we had same coordinate system for the images, the similar size, 240 by 240 by 155, and all images were skull stripped and normalized. We started in 2020, and the first publication came out in 2021, which was published in AJNR. The, um, Method for that study uh, was again a radiomics based analysis. Uh, it, uh, of course, it was not as mature as uh, what we have right now. However, the results showed that older age and supratentorial location of tumors were significant predictors of BRAF V600E mutation, and sex was not a significant predictor. 
Then we um, worked on a, another project um, called Open Radiomics. There we focused on reproducible pipelines instead of global models and uh, tried different settings for each source of variability in radiomics analysis. One source of variability is the radiomics extraction settings. And for that, we focused on the most important um, hyperparameter, which is bin width. And we tried uh, three different values, 15, 25, and 35 for that hyperparameter. Um, because this study, Open Radiomics, uh, was done on, on the BRATS data set, we had access to different tumor subregions. So we extracted radiomics features for four different uh, tumor subregions, being whole tumor, edema, non-enhancing core, and enhancing core. And we had six different image normalization methods um, and also four different sequences. So combination of all these uh, different settings gave us 288 sets of radiomics data set um, corresponding to almost three gigabytes of tabular data, which is again, one of a kind. And there, uh, we realized that until we curate enormous data sets, data split remains the most important factor of randomness in um, AI-based pipelines for radiomics analysis. As you can see, in 10 different um, settings, we could achieve perfect uh, area under the rock curve. Um, it, it could be as high as one, but that result was very irreproducible. Uh, it was true chance that uh, we found a golden uh, data split on which the, the model performed perfectly. So uh, using the repetitive pipeline of uh, open radiomics, now, uh, we are focused on uh, PLGNT classification. First step was to do binary classification, so identifying uh, BRAF fusion versus BRAF uh, V600E mutation. And uh, the average uh, AUC was 88, which is impressive. Uh, the other ob observation was that uh, other than T2, which is slightly um, worse than other sequences. The other ones uh, were, were, were pretty good. Uh, also bin width and image normalization was not um, significant in, in uh, this research. The other thing was that after switching to uh, multi-class classification, now BRAF fusion versus mutation versus non-BRAF, of course, we anticipated to uh, observe some uh, dropping in, in um, average AUC. And as you can see now, instead of 88, we are at 70, almost 79. Uh, however, uh, now we are aligned with the common sense of radiologists uh, who believe flare is the most important um, imaging sequence for PLG and the classification. Conclusion is that BRAF fusion versus uh, BRAF V600 mutation classification uh, can be done precisely with the combination of bin with up 25 or 35 with min max normalization. And then T1 contrast in her sequences were the uh, best among the four sequences we had and T2 uh, was the worst. For multi-class classification, Z-score uh, coupled with bin width of uh, 15 and um, flare uh, sequence um, emerged as the most effective setting and flare-based radiomics models in multi-class classification significantly uh, surpassed other sequences. 
Thank you very much. And uh, here's my email uh, in case there is any questions. Thank you.